Hey guys, it's Alexandra from OnRockWoodLane.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really fun coaster that has worked in these diagonal boxes where the boxes alternate the direction that they're going in. This stitch pattern is called a Scotch Stitch and it really helps this project work up pretty quickly as compared to like the Continental Stitch. If you're familiar with crocheting, there is a crochet stitch called Corner to Corner Boxes. It's also abbreviated as C2C, where you begin working just one box in the bottom corner, and then you work diagonally to increase up to the size that you're looking for, and then you decrease back down to one box in the top corner. So I have a coaster pattern using that technique on my I Love Knots blog. And I wanted to do something kind of similar to that to see if I could do a coaster pattern using the same number of boxes. So that's what I have here. The coaster is not finished yet. We're going to do that together. But this coaster is going to finish out at about 4 inches. You're going to find the chart and written instructions for this linked in the description box below. If you are an On Rockwood Lane newsletter subscriber or I Love Knots or Creation Crochet or any blog that uses Grow for locked content on their blogs, you can get a free PDF of this. All you have to do is go over to my blog, scroll down to the PDF section. You're going to see the little Grow box pop up. You can either log in with your information and then you'll see the picture pop up so you can download it or you can create a free account. This is something that a lot of bloggers are using now and the great thing is that they're all linked in the same account. So you just create one account and you can access the content from any blog that uses Grow. And another cool feature I love about it is that once you're logged in, you can favorite posts that you like by clicking the little red heart at the bottom right corner, it will save all your posts to your Grow account. And then you could just go into it and you'll see any kind of recipes, patterns, anything that you have saved from any blog will pop up there all in the same place. I love that feature. Alrighty, so to make this coaster, I'm using 7 mesh plastic canvas. I'm using Worsted Weight number 4 yarn. This is Red Heart Super Saver and the color is called Turqua. I'm going to be using this green color which is called tea leaf in the tutorial. I want to show you really quick what does worsted weight number four mean. When you're looking at your yarn it's going to have a sleeve on it like this. You'll roll it over until you see this little ball with a number in it. This number four indicates that it is a worsted weight yarn. This is going to work great with seven mesh canvas. And then you use different weight yarns for different size canvases. You're also going to need a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors. I'm using some big scissors. I think these are really easy to use and manipulate, but you can use any size scissors that you are the most comfortable with. You may also want to have a tape measure or a ruler if you don't really want to count your boxes. Let's go ahead and get started. So. There are two ways you could do this. You could either stitch your project up first and then cut it out, or you could cut your mesh out first and then stitch up your project. I like to do either method, just depends on the project that I'm working. For this one, for example, I knew it was going to be a perfect square, so I knew cutting out was going to be really easy afterwards. I didn't really know how big I needed this to be. I just went ahead and started stitching. I just wanted all the boxes to be even. So for this coaster, I went ahead and stitched everything first, starting in this bottom left corner and working outward. And I still have the yarn attached here to whip stitch it but the coaster is complete and the canvas is ready to be cut. So you can see where my stitching ends over here on the right side and I would just cut on the other side of the stitching all the way around and then whip stitch. So this is option number one. Option number two is going to be to cut your canvas first. So when we're looking at these little boxes, we're going to cut a square that is 26 holes wide by 26 holes tall. So you're going to look to these little boxes and count one, two, three, four, 
five, and so on until you have 26 boxes. Another way that you could do this if you don't really want to count, but you want to go ahead and cut it out first. When working with seven mesh canvas, seven holes is going to equal one inch. Let me zoom in really quick. So this is where your ruler or your soft tape measure comes in handy. You would lay it down here, starting either at the end or at the number one. Sometimes I like to start at the number one so that it's nice and even. You just have to remember that when you're measuring across. But I know that the coaster without the whip stitch is less than four inches. So you can use your ruler laid there on the edge of the left side, measure over four inches, and cut on the outside of that hole that is right above the four inches. And then you could do the same thing. You could lay this upward, measuring at the bottom edge, and then go all the way up and cut the same way, just above where the four inch mark is. Completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and count my holes and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut. I'm gonna place my scissors here as a marker and then I'm going to count one more time to make sure that I got the correct number of holes. And I did. Now I'm going to count as I cut upward. I also want to have the same number of holes, 26 wide, 26 tall. And I'm just cutting along the edge on the outside of that number 26 hole. Just cutting that little bar right there. And then I'll continue to cut upward these little bars right there along the side edge of that 26th hole. And I haven't been counting, but I just got a little bit close here. And now I'm going to go ahead and count so I can make sure I cut this correctly. So where I've cut right now is box number 20. That should be 26. So I'm going to go ahead and count one more time. Now I'm going to cut one horizontal bar past it so that I can come across above the 26th hole. And now I'm just going to cut all the way along the edge there until I get to the edge on the other side. And there is our finished square. Now we can go ahead and start stitching. I've grabbed the yarn out of the center pull of the ball and I'm just gonna go ahead and get myself a nice tail to work with. You don't wanna pull too much because it becomes difficult to work with and then it starts to fray as you pull through. I usually pull about 30 inches to work with or so. I'm actually going to pull just a smaller tail so I have something really easy to work on camera with. And then you fasten off, thread it into your tapestry needle. We're gonna start by bringing our needle up from the back side of the canvas to the front. Another thing I wanna point out before I begin, a lot of tutorials will have you working horizontally starting in the right corner if you're right-handed, left corner if you're left-handed. I like to work vertically. That is the way that is most comfortable for me. 
So you can do it however is most comfortable for you. But I'm gonna start up here at the top right corner. And there is the top left hole right here. We're going to bring our needle up from the box that is to the right of it. So just insert from the back of your work into that hole to the right and bring it up. And you're gonna pull through until you get close to the end of your yarn. Now, I always say that you wanna have a tail end that is between half an inch and an inch. With this box stitch not being quite as tight on the tail ends, I do recommend a longer tail than normal. So go ahead and pull your tail end, then lay it flat on the back of your canvas, and you're going to hold it with your finger until you get it secured in place. Now we're gonna bring this needle diagonally down to the left and insert into that hole from the top side to the back and then pull it through. Now we're going to come up in the hole to the right at the top from the back to the front and pull through and work diagonally down to the left. We have the hole that our yarn is coming out of, a hole in the middle, and then we're going to insert our needle into the hole to the left of that and pull through. And if your yarn gets caught, just pull it off and continue pulling through. Now I'll bring my needle up from the box on the top right, from the back to the front, pull through, work diagonally down to the left. This time we have the hole that our yarn is coming out of. We have two holes in the middle and we'll insert our needle into the hole to the left. Bring your needle from the back into the hole at the top right. Work diagonally across to the left. We have one, two, three holes in the middle. Bring your needle up in the box to the right at the top. And we have one, two, three, four boxes in the middle. And then bring your needle down the box to the left. Now this is going to be as wide as we want our boxes. So we have one, two, three, four, five stitches. And now we're going to start decreasing back down. So we're going to come up on the right side into the hole that is underneath where we worked our last stitch at the top. work diagonally down so that we are inserting our needle into the box to the right of where we finished our previous stitch. That's going to leave you with one, two, three boxes in the middle. Then we're going to bring our needle up in the box underneath the previous stitch on the right side. Work diagonally across over one, two boxes in the middle, inserting into the stitch to the left of that, which is gonna be even with your other stitches. And the whole time that you're working your stitches, you wanna work over that tail end on the back that you've been holding with your finger to capture it within that box. And you can see here that it extends past that box. I'm going to work over that tail end when I work the next box so that it can be captured in that box underneath it as well. Go ahead and bring your needle up on the right side underneath the previous stitch. Work diagonally across with just one box in the middle, inserting into the box to the left, even with the rest of your stitches. And now we have one more stitch left to complete this, inserting into the stitch to the right. 
and then working diagonally down. There are no boxes in the middle this time, and this is going to complete your first box. So we started with just one stitch here at the top that looks like a continental stitch and ended with the same stitch at the bottom. Now this next box is going to alternate the direction that this is being worked in where we started at the left and worked down to the right. This time we're going to start at the right and work down to the left. And it's going to be worked in the same pattern that you see here. So we're going to start with this one little stitch down here that looks like a continental stitch. You're going to begin by bringing your needle up through the box that is diagonally down to the right of where your tail end is currently coming out of. So currently your tail end should be right here on the back side. We're going to bring our needle up through the box that is diagonally down to the right. And pull through. And then I'm going to work diagonally up to the left into that box where my tail end was coming out of. Then I'll bring my needle through the box that is on the bottom right of where we worked our previous stitch. And work diagonally up to the left. There's one box in the middle inserting into the stitch diagonally up to the left of that one. And this is going to be in the same hole that your previous box has worked into. Bring your needle through the box on the right underneath your previous stitch. Work diagonally up to the left, one, two boxes in the middle, inserting your needle into the box diagonally up to the left into the same stitch as your previous box. Bring your needle up on the right underneath where your previous stitch has worked. Work diagonally up to the left, one, two, three boxes in the middle, inserting into the next one where your previous box has worked. One more stitch here, inserting on the right underneath the previous stitch. And working diagonally up, there is one, two, three, four boxes in the middle, inserting your needle into the last stitch on the edge that is connected to the longest stitch of your previous box. Now this is as wide and as tall as we want this box to be, so we're going to go ahead and start decreasing back down. We're going to bring our needle through the box that is on the bottom to the left of the previous stitch. Work diagonally up. You have one, two, three boxes in the middle, and you're inserting into the hole that is just underneath your previous stitch. Bring your needle through on the bottom, just to the left of your previous stitch. Diagonally up, one, two boxes in the middle, inserting in the next box underneath your previous stitch. Bring your needle through the hole on the bottom, just to the left of your previous stitch. Working diagonally up with just one box in the middle inserting into the box underneath your previous stitch. And now we have one more stitch left, bringing up through the bottom into the box to the left of your previous stitch, and then working upward to the left into that next box. You don't have any holes in the center. And that completes our second box. And when I flip this over, you can see that my tail is now completely covered. Now we're just going to continue alternating this pattern throughout the whole entire coaster. So here you can see that my tail end is coming out over here at the top left side. I'm going to start the next box by bringing my needle through the hole that is where the first part of that stitch is coming out of. And now we're going to work, just like we did this first box, diagonally down to the left. Bring your needle up on the right side, diagonally down to the left. 
and continue working until you have five stitches. One trick I like to do here is that once I insert my needle, I hold the tension of it on the back with my middle finger so that I can bring my hand around to the front to grab that needle. And now that I have five boxes, I'm going to start decreasing down, inserting into that stitch just underneath my previous stitch. So we can work on that edge and then diagonally down to the box that is to the right of that previous stitch and continue working downward. And now we're going to begin that next box which starts on the right side and works down to the left. Here my tail end is coming out of the bottom. To begin the next box I'm going to work through the box that is just diagonally down to the right from the back side. And then I'll work diagonally up to the left into that same stitch that that tail end was coming out of. And then I'm going to continue working so that I can work all the way across and have five stitches, even with the boxes that are above it. And then I'll start decreasing back down working evenly with that longest stitch here along the bottom. And I'm going to rotate this so I can work a little bit easier. Let's see if I can win at Yarn Chicken and finish this box up. I think so. Pretty close though. Now that I've come to the end of my yarn, I'm going to go ahead and finish off, but you can see I have four complete boxes alternating that direction. Flip to the back. You're going to run your needle underneath those stitches of the box to hide your tail end the same way as you did in the beginning when you worked over your stitches. I like to work through two boxes here just for added security. I also like to break the stitch in half when I exit here, so I'm going to run my needle underneath several stitches beginning with that last one I just finished working, just pushing through this back side underneath all those stitches. And when I exit that last stitch, I am breaking it in half so that it captures my yarn better. and then pull it through, rotate it so I can work into this next box above it, breaking that first stitch in half there, and working underneath all those stitches to the end where I'm gonna break my last stitch in half as well, just to help capture my yarn better. Push that through, give it a tug, and then we can go ahead and fasten off that tail end. Now I'll flip this back around. I'm going to go ahead and pull another strand of yarn from my ball. I like to work from the center. It's the easiest to pull from. Thread that into my tapestry needle. And then to get started again, you want to make sure that you are working in the same pattern. So we just finished over here on the bottom left. Bring your needle up that second hole from the left in the same stitch that your previous boxes worked into. Pull through until you get close to the end. I have just one box left here. I'm going to lay my tail end here horizontally so that it's going to go into the box that is to the right. I'm going to pull it. I don't need it quite that long. 
And then I'm going to hold it on the back side here horizontally so that I can work these bottom two boxes over that strand. And now I'm going to begin again working horizontally here to the left. Coming up to the right and working horizontally down to the left. As I work, just making sure that that tail end is being captured in the stitches that I'm working. And I'm going to go ahead and complete this box all the way down just the same way as we started our first box. Here I am at the bottom. I'm going to complete this very last stitch. We're going to have five complete boxes here. And now we're going to begin row two. We're going to do it the same exact way, except we're now working from the bottom up to the top. You can see my strand is coming out here on the bottom left. So to begin the next box, we're going to bring our needle up through the stitch where our first part of that last stitch was worked. So that's the second from the bottom. And work diagonally to the right. Bring your needle up on the left side here in that same hole the previous box is worked into. Diagonally down to the right, all the way to the bottom edge. You have one box in the middle, up through the hole on the left side. Diagonally down to the right, two boxes in the middle, up on the left side. Diagonally down, you have three boxes in the middle. Up on the left side, this is equal with the tallest stitch from that previous box. You have one, two, three, four boxes in the middle and down on the right. Now we start decreasing back down, so we're equal with that tallest stitch. This is another trick here. I insert into that stitch on the right. I pull through just a little bit. I have the majority of the strand here on the front. Then I bring that needle up into the next stitch, hold the tension on the back side, and bring my hand around to pull it through. Just gonna save you a little bit. We've completed the first box from the second row here. To begin the next one, the strand is coming out over here to the right. We're going to bring it up through the hole where we worked the first part of that stitch, diagonally up to the left of where we currently are, and then work diagonally up to the right. Down on the left, diagonally up to the right, down on the left, diagonally up to the right, and you continue until you have five stitches here. and then we decrease back down. You can see where the strand is coming out of your last stitch. So you're gonna bring your needle up now, diagonally up to the left, and work back down into that same stitch the tail end was coming out of on the right. And then continue working up to the right, and you'll continue working in the same pattern all the way up till you get to the top and you complete that last box. You can see I didn't quite win at yarn chicken this time, but I'm flipping to the back and then I'm going to just bring my needle underneath several of those stitches on the back, breaking the last stitch in half, pull through, pull my little strand out, and then run it through the next box, breaking the first stitch in half, running it under all those stitches and breaking the last stitch in half. This is what I like to do to help capture my yarn and secure it in place. Give it a tug and then go ahead and fasten off. 
Now for hiding your tail end in this next part, you can either run it on the back side through the same boxes that you just finished and then come up where you need to to work your next stitch or you can just come up from the back side where you need to work your next stitch and bring your tail end on the back side up into the box that's going to be above it. After you complete the second row of boxes then you begin again the same way that you started working from the top down and you'll have one in the middle that is worked from the bottom up and one more at the end that is from the top down. If you need a refresher on anything you can pop down into the description box below. Click on the timestamp, it will jump you backwards in the video. Once we get to the end and we finish our last stitch, we're going to whip stitch around to finish this off. So I'll see you then. All right, I've reached the end and now it's time to do the whip stitch. So if you have stitched your project first, you're going to want to go ahead and cut it out and then move into the whip stitch. To cut it out, you're going to cut the same exact way as I did right on the outside of that 26th hole all the way along that outside edge. One bar past it at the top so you can get above the 26th hole there and then cut along the edge all the way across. Make sure to keep your tail end out of the way of your scissors so that you don't accidentally snip that. And if you cut first and then stitched, this is what your square looks like right now. Whip stitching is going to be the finishing touch to cover up the sides here. My tail end is currently coming out of the second from the left stitch at the top right. I'm going to bring my needle through the stitch that is to the left of it from the back to the front and I'm going to be working clockwise. I'm going to bring this up and over to cover the edge. I like to do two passes when I do my whip stitch. I feel like with one pass in each stitch it's not enough coverage and I like a really full edge so that it just looks really neat and complete. So I'm going to be working two stitches into each one of my stitches here along the edges. You can do it just one pass if you feel comfortable with that. I'm going to use this as my second pass and I'm going to bring my needle always from the back to the front. So through the next stitch here to the right and you're working in those holes along the edge where your other stitches are also worked into and pull it through. I'm going to bring it around the top. I like to hold it right here over top of my index finger underneath my middle finger. So when I brought it around, I just brought it up and over, over the index finger, under the middle finger. That's how I like to hold the tension of it. And that's going to be my first pass for this stitch. I'm going to bring my needle back through the same exact hole that I just finished working. The first pass covers the top center. The second pass, once I get to where the slack runs out in the back, then I go ahead and release it as I'm pulling. And then the second pass, I bring it up and over to the right. Bring my needle up through the next stitch to the right. I'm pulling now just at the end of the slack until the slack runs out and then I'm going to release with my fingers in the back and pull this up and over to the center through the same exact hole I just finished working. That first one was in the center, now I'm going up and over to the right. Through the next hole to the right, bringing this one up and over to the center. Through the same exact hole, bringing this one up and over to the right. This is how I like to work mine to get really good coverage along the edge. Otherwise, I feel like there's a lot of clear gaps in there. Again, if you feel really good with just one pass, then go ahead and do just one pass. Some yarns are a little bit fluffier than others, so it's going to fill in the gaps a little bit better. I'm going to continue to work in this manner all the way around working two passes and holding the tension on the back. Once I get to the corner, I'm going to do three passes to cover that up and I'll show you that once I get across. 
Here I've just finished the second stitch in the second to last hole at the top. I'm going to bring that over to the right as I showed before. Insert into the last hole. Bring that up in the center through the last hole again. I'm going to hold the tension here at the top with my ring finger as I pull this through and the second pass is going to go right over to the right over top of that point. Then come back through the same hole for a third time. Pull the tension again with my ring finger. Pull the rest of that strand through and come up and over to the right. Three passes in that corner stitch with the first one covering the top center second covering the point, and the third covering the right side there. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate and continue working along here, going back to working two stitches into each hole all the way along this edge until I get to the next corner. Once I get to the next corner, then I'm going to do three passes in that last stitch to cover up that corner. And I'm going to continue working all the way around until I get back to the beginning. I've come close to the end of my yarn here and I have just a little bit left, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and add a new strand. So I've just finished the second part of this box right here. I'm going to go ahead and work the first pass of the next box. And then I'm going to bring it around to the back and I'm going to weave it into this box that is right underneath where I'm working. Give it a tug and then I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. Thread my new strand into the tapestry needle. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it through this box that is to the left of the box underneath where I finished working. I'm going to bring it through this box into the box on the right which is going to leave me in the perfect place to bring my stitch up here and it will still look natural. Because if, for example, I brought my yarn up through this box here on the right and then tried to bring it over, the strand would look strange as it was pulled from this direction. So it will actually change the appearance of where these two strands will meet each other and I want to make it look as consistent as possible. So I'm going to come from that direction over and then pick it up right there. So I'm going to rotate this. This is the box where my strand ended. The box next to it. I'm going to come from the top down and then from the bottom up. Then flip it around, bring my needle through that last stitch so I can work the second pass, and then bring that over to the right. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue working as if my strand never ran out. Here at the end, I have reached the last box. I'm going to work my first pass as normal. Then I'm going to work the second pass as normal, covering the point. And this is where I'm going to see how it looks if I need to add another stitch. If you have a gap here to the right, then you want to go ahead and work a third pass. If that last stitch there fills in the gap nicely, then you do not need to work another pass and you can go ahead and finish off. Just flip to the back, weave in your yarn end. I'm still holding tension on that last stitch because I don't want it to move. Look 
look at it one more time. Still looks great. Now I can go ahead and work into the second box. And fasten off. And now I'm finished and it's ready to use. Guys, thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's such a fun stitch pattern and it works up pretty quickly. Would be a great project to do like a checker pattern or like a plaid sort of pattern. Let me know down in the comments below what colors you'll be using for yours. You'll find the link to my blog post with the chart and written instructions down in the description box below. It would help me out a ton if you would smash that like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video. Subscribe while you're there and I'll catch you in the next one.